Hello there, saints, and welcome to the March edition of Wisdom for Today. The theme for this month is Getting Results Through Prayers. Getting Results Through Prayers. I know that many Christians are familiar with different facets of prayer. I'm aware that many Christians actually attempt to pray. And I'm also aware that many people believe they are prayer warriors. Now, if all of these were true, how come so many Christians are not getting the results they desire? This has been my interest for many, many years. I was so much interested in this that I wrote a book on it, Effective Prayer Manual. It's one of my highest selling books on Amazon and on, and on my website. But what I want to talk to you about this month is how you can actually get results from praying. In uh, 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 to 15, it says, This is our confidence that when we ask him according to his will, anything, then he hears us. And if God has heard us, then we have our petitions before him. So that's such a bold statement from Apostle John, telling us that if you pray according to the will of God, then God has heard you. There's no theology that says, no, your prayer is not answered or it's not been heard. And then once we know that it is before him, then we know that he will work it out on our behalf. So I start from that point of view. I want to start by letting everyone know that praying is a dialogue. It's not a monologue. What do I mean by that? I come from the part of the world where a lot of prayers are being said daily. I'm sure there will be many night videos and praying sessions. And I'm not disparaging that. I'm not taking anything away from that. It helps people. And it helps some people, and that's the kind of thing they need. But it's an area where very few people actually get their prayers answered, with all this much prayer being offered. And one of the reasons I think, in my own opinion, over many years of being a pastor, is that they're always talking at God. They're always saying something to God. They're always asking something of God. But very few actually take time to listen to what God is saying. Prayer is meant to create an atmosphere whereby you are able to engage God in a conversation and get results. Get results. You know, it might, it, might, it might come immediately. It might be in a dream. It might be through some wise people God has placed in your life or around you. But your prayers are meant to hand, uh, to hand over to you keys that will open the doors that you're knocking on. So we have to practice the act of hearing God, of listening to God, of trying to hear what he's trying to say back to us. So many people pray, many people actually pray a lot, but very few people actually take time to listen to what God is trying to say. So I urge you today that you start to practice the act of listening to God in some part of your prayer. Keep quiet. Try and see whether there's something the Spirit is trying to say to you. Have a time of solitude, away from all the distractions. Try and give yourself the opportunity to at, at least hear God's feedback. As you read the Word, God may amplify certain aspects of it to you. As you listen to a message from anointed uh, vessels of God, you might actually hear something that is amplified in your, in your soul, and you know that that is for you. But you must always have an avenue whereby you hear back from God. If not, you're just talking at God. The second thing I found out that actually hinders people's prayer or makes it less effective is that a lot of people go before God without boldness. You know, they, they go and, and, and rehash all these wrong things they've done as if God doesn't know or God didn't know when they committed that crime. Oh God, you know, I, I was not very nice yesterday. And then they start to recant all these silly things they've done. Whereas the Bible tells us that with the finished work on the cross of Calvary, hallelujah, with the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ, you can enter boldly before him, not because of what you've done, but because of what Jesus has done. And that's what Hebrew chapter 4 verse 16 is telling us. That after we looked at all these wonderful things that Jesus has done, let us now go boldly before him to receive the grace and mercy that we need 
for, for, for that time. So first of all, many people only have monologues. Secondly, they don't go before God boldly. They go timidly. I see they, they, they've carried all the sins of this world on their head. No, Jesus has paid for it. Jesus has paid for it. It's not a license to sin, but it's a license to have boldness when you don't deserve boldness. It's a license for you to receive mercy when you don't deserve mercy. It is, it, 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 it is a license for you to receive favor, which is unmerited. It's an unmerited thing, but God has given it to you. Amen. The next thing that I believe people need to actually work on is to incorporate and inculcate the Holy Spirit into their prayer life. The, the Bible tells us in Romans 8, 26, that we do not know how to pray. I don't know how it can be any more blunt than that. The, it, it, it's a sweeping statement. And when God makes a sweeping statement, that means it affects all of us. There is no special person or anything. We do not know how to pray. That means many of us just shoot the wrong targets in our prayer. So we need the help of God, the Holy Spirit, to pray accurately. So for some, they pray in tongues. For those who are struggling with this, you can actually verbally ask for God, the Holy Spirit, to help you in your prayer. However you do it, incorporate God, the Holy Spirit, into your prayer life. For he is the one that will help to make sure you pray accurately and you get results because you are going to pray accurately to God's will. So let's go over it. It's a dialogue. As you pray, listen. Two, go boldly. Yes, there are things you may have done that you're not proud of. There are things you may still be working on that you're not proud of. But the blood of Jesus is the one that speaks for you and speaks a better testimony than the blood of Abel. That's what that means. Is, is there the, uh, law or grace? There's no in between. If it's law, we've all fallen short of it. If it's grace, we're all encompassed in it. That is what grace means. So you must make sure that you go, you incorporate the Holy Spirit. I, I, I really implore you to, 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 to speak in tongues. Go to your, to, to, your, to, your, to, to, your, to your vessels of God and ask them to lay hands on you so that you know, it, it can be activated in you. That is the shortest cut to praying perfectly. Because as you pray in tongues, you pray accurately the will of God and the answers come back to you instantaneously. Now, there's another aspect that in this prayer, where people do not get results in prayer, the lack of forgiveness. This affected me for so many years because there were so many people that really, really hurt me. People that are really close to me, even in my family. People that I looked up to, people that are meant to have kept me safe and secure, but let me down in every way. And so I struggled. And because God has given me such sharp memory, I couldn't understand how I can forget what they've done to me when my memory would not let go of it. So over time, God had to teach me how to remove the sting from the hurt, to remove the sting from the act. So yes, I do remember because I have very good memory, but it does not hurt me as much anymore. And it does not affect me as negatively anymore. Because it is said clearly in Mark 11, 25, and in some other parts of the uh, book of Matthew, chapter 6, that if you do not forgive, then God will not forgive you. And you cannot have your, answered, uh, your prayers answered unless you forgive. So this is very key to us getting our, our prayers answered. Another thing I've seen, especially in the Western world, is that we're too busy. I mean, I walk almost around the clock. Uh, I go to an office job and then I run my business in the evening. By the time, any time in between, I'm either eating, sleeping, or tired. That's the simple truth of the matter. But if you can make time not to get to work late, if you can make time to other places on time, why not make time to pray? So I challenge you that you need to be innovative in your prayer life. Now, for some of you, it might not be feasible. It might not be easy for you to create 30 minutes or one hour that you are, you are in the corner listening and praying. That's okay too. You've got to live with what you've got. You've got to work with what you've got. 
So that's why I ask people to be innovative. In my book, Effective Prayer Manual, I wrote about the prayer tree in one of the chapters. What does that mean? It means listing down the things you that concerns you, that are important to you, that are really uppermost on your heart, that you want to talk to God about. So instead of you trying to think, oh, Lord bless uh, Janet, Lord bless John, um, Lord uh, help, with, help with the weather, you have a list of what you're asking God for. And I often advise that this list should be accompanied with a diary because you must record God's goodness because human memory generally are often very short. They forget all the things God has done and just fixate on one thing that they think he hasn't done even though he's always working it out in the background for our good. So have a prayer tree whereby you list oh, you know, who you want to pray for, your close family, uh, your siblings, your extended family, your ministry, you know, whatever it is, people that you work with, just have that list. And then you go through that when you pray so that your prayer goes in some uh, sensible fashion as well. And you will be amazed what the Lord can do. If you're in a place, at a place of work, you can pray and nobody will know. In your mind, God can read your mind. The spirituals can read your mind. God especially can read your mind. So pray. That's why it says prayer without ceasing. And people are like, how are we going to do that? We go to work, what, 16 hours a day, 14 hours a day? Because you can do it in your mind as you're driving, as you're cleaning, as you're walking, as you're tap banging away on the keyboard. Whatever it is you do, you can be praying in your mind nonstop and getting that circular, that communication going from heaven to earth. But I guarantee you one thing. God is not man that he will lie. All of his promises in the Bible, they are for you, for you and, for, and for me. And if he says we should ask him anything in Jesus' name and he will do it, I believe him. I believe him. And this is the confidence that we have. That if we pray according to his will, that he hears us. And if he has heard us, then our petitions are before him. I pray that this has been a blessing to you, that you will incorporate some of this into your prayer life, and that we'll have testimonies as well. God bless you, and have a wonderful day. Bye for now.